Okay, this sermon's entitled, The God of the Old Testament. And I'd like to open up with uh, prayer, then with a few verses. All right, dear God, I just pray that you'll allow us to understand what your word says on this subject. I'm going to look at Old Testament verses in this sermon, and we're going to just go over what your word says. I just pray that you'll allow us to be receptive and open-minded and to, um, and to um, understand your word with clarity. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Now, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Psalm 78, the first three verses. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if a person is not saved, if a person has not believed on Jesus Christ for eternal life, they cannot understand God's word. It's not going to make any sense to them. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because of uh, what prompted this sermon. I was listening to um, this video of Richard Dawkins, interviewed by Ben Stein. Now let me go ahead and grab my notes. I've got a quote that he made. His, here's what he, what he thinks about the God of the Old Testament. Here's how he characterizes the God of the Old Testament. I'm going to give you his quote. So hang on one second. Now, if you're, if you're lost, you have no idea what, the, what God is like. Because all you're doing is they're not even attacking the real God of the Bible. They're just making up an anthropomorphism, a straw man. They're making up a false God that's not real. And then they're, then they're attacking him. So Richard Dawkins says, and here's what he says about the God of the Old Testament. We're going we're to look at his quote, and then I'm going to line it up with some verses. And I quote, The God of the Old Testament is a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A misogynistic, homophobic, homophobic racist, infanticidal, megalomaniacal, and capriciously malevolent bully. And I remember, now, I remember hearing this. And I remember he also said he was, a, I think, philicidal, F-I-L-I, you know, and that means he, he hate he, he kills his own family. Okay, like the word familial or the word filial. First of all, this is not what the God of the Bible teaches at all. The God of the Bible is a loving God, and we're going to look through the Old Testament and a bunch of scriptures on this to prove that the God of the Old Testament was, was, a, was a loving God, period. So let's take a look at, and if, you, if I don't get to all these verses, I'm just going to give you the list of the verses. Malachi 1.9, Jonah 4.2, Genesis 33.11, um, Psalm 86, verse 15, Psalm 103, verse 8, Psalm 111, verse 4. So let's just look at a few of these verses. Let's go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33. Let's see if this is, if the, if this, you know, false, you know, characterization of God is what the Bible teaches. And the Bible does not teach this. God is a God of love, period. Now, that's found. Let's, let's take a look at the Old Testament now. Genesis 33, verse 11. See, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't understand the Bible. It's not going to make any sense to you. It's, it's going to be like, like I said, Jesus, Jesus spoke in parables. He spoke parabolically to let people know that if you're not saved, you're not going to, you're not going to understand it. That's why it says in Revelation, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. That's, that's found all over the Bible. But my point is, if, you, if you're not saved, you don't have the right ears. Genesis 33, verse 11. Okay? It says, Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God hath dealt graciously with me, because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. There's one verse that lets us know that God deals with people graciously. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, Psalm Psalm 86. And there's a lot of verses on this. I've got a, about at least 30 verses here. I don't know if I'll be able to get to get to all 30 of them in this sermon. And there's more than just than, than, than my list. Psalm 86. And take a look at verse 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and grace and gracious, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Okay, now Psalm 103. And this is Old Testament I'm reading here. Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Okay, Psalm 116. Psalm 116, yeah, the God, God is a God of love and a God of wrath. But it's, he's the God of wrath because of people like Richard Dawkins, people like these atheists, people that, that don't believe on Christ, that don't believe in God. He's got to be wrath. He's, of course. 
Because man is sin man we're sinners, folks, and that's the way it is. But see, to those that are saved, God is a God of mercy and wrath and, excuse me, a God of grace and mercy. There's no wrath for the saved. Because Jesus Christ took our punishment for us. Okay? That's why the Bible says in Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Period. Psalm 116, it says in verse 5, The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Look at that's verse 6. Look at verse 5. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. Okay? Now, turn over to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Hey, you see, God's only wrathful because because man re rebels and refuses to uh, to come to Christ, it refuses to admit that they're a sinner and then and then and then believe on Jesus Christ, you know, to save them. It's man's fault. Isaiah 30 verse 19 reads Let me make sure this is, yeah, this is the right verse. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of the cry of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. God's gracious, folks. So that's the way it is. Okay. Now, there's actually a verse in the Bible that actually says that. It states it out point blank. Let me see if I can find that verse. Psalm. Let's go back to Psalm. Book of Psalms. I'm just going to find the verse. I know where this verse is. I'm just going to. I'm going to dig around for it, and I, well, I believe I know where it's at. So hang on one second. Okay, I've already read that verse. Gracious is the Lord. Uh, that was Psalm 116.5. I forgot I just read that. But now let's turn over to Psalm 117. I'm thinking of another verse. Okay, Psalm 117 is what I was thinking of. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. Now look what this verse says. For his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Now look at the first part of that again. His merciful kindness is great toward us. I mean, good night. How, much, how many more verses do I have to show you? This is just, the, the, the Bible's got so many verses on this, it's not even funny. Turn to Exodus chapter 34. Go all the way back, all the way back to Exodus. Okay, Exodus 34. Look at verse 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and and abundant in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity. See, Richard Dawkins said that the God of the Old Testament was unforgiving. Called him malevolent. He called him capricious. He, you know, that's like ludic or, you know, whimsical. Just kind of, they do whatever they want. No, that's not the way it is. God is forgiving here. Keeping mercy for thousands. Hang on one second. See, lost people cannot, they don't, they don't see the truth. They're, they're blind to it. Now let's, let me look at the. Let me, read, let me read the verse again. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the, the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. So he's, he forgives iniquity and sin. It's, you know, it's just it's so it's so clear. Okay, jump back to uh, chapter thirty-three. Look at verse nineteen. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will, pro I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. You see that? God is a, a gracious, loving God, period. Okay, John 3.16 makes that clear, but since they want, people want to attack the God of the Old Testament, I need to defend the God of the Old Testament as being the exact same God of the New Testament. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's turn back to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. See, people like this, Richard Dawkins and these atheists, they're lucky to still be alive. With, with all their rebellion and rejecting God, rejecting God's grace. I don't even know why, I mean, I guess this just proves God is, is merciful and long-suffering and gracious. That he would allow these people, these mockers, these blasphemers, these people, that we, these Christ rejectors, he would allow, the fact that he would even allow them to continue on in this, in this wickedness, it shows that he's long-suffering and merciful. Okay, now look at uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace 
in the eyes of the Lord. Grace. Grace is an expression of God's love. Okay. <clears throat> Turn to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. I'm going to keep, keep showing, keep going over Old Testament verses that prove how good God is. Daniel chapter 9. See, a lost person is coming at is coming at, at the Bible. They're coming at God with the with the flawed understanding of who He is. I've heard lost people say, "What kind of God is that that would send His own children to hell?" And that that's that's, a, that's the wrong question because God doesn't send His children to hell. Okay, Galatians three twenty six. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Okay, Galatians four six. It talks about we cry, "Abba, Father." He's our Father. Okay, if his, he can't, he doesn't throw his children in hell. The people that go to hell are not his children. Okay, period. Jesus said, they're of, you, are, you are of your father, the devil. We're, they, see, lost people are not his children. They could become his children if they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to save them, but see, they're not. and They haven't done that. So the, the question, that, that, that question is not even a legitimate question because um, lost people are not saved. <clears throat> It's their own fault. Uh, Daniel chapter nine. Let's take a look at a verse that proves God is good even to even to when we rebel against Him. God is still good to us. It says in, in Daniel chapter nine. Look at verse nine. To the, to the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against Him. Look at that. We've rebelled against Him, and yet He's still merciful and forgiving. So I, I can just keep giving you more verses on this, but you know what? I've proved my I've proven my point. The God of the Old Testament is is a, is a loving God just like the God of the New Testament. So that's all I have. Let me close in prayer. Um, dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon and, and getting into your word. I just pray that you allow people to not have a biased or a, or a, a, a twisted or an, a skewed understanding of who you are, but just open. I pray that people just open up your word and see what your scripture says. Bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.